Hey there, my wedding planning friends, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer. I'm a wedding planner based in Montana, and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. So it's no secret that wedding traditions are changing quite a bit within the wedding industry. We're seeing a lot less of the traditional wedding practices and seeing the inclusion of a lot more unique aspects to weddings and seeing how couples are putting their own personal spin onto their weddings and seeing some new traditions or new trends. Social media is a huge component to this. I think we are constantly seeing what other people are doing and seeing so much inspiration from other couples via social media like Instagram and TikTok. So today I thought it would be fun to talk about all of the wedding trends I've seen on TikTok that I'm actually loving as a wedding planner. So number one is kind of reimagining the first look. So the first look in and of itself, somewhat non-traditional, but it's something that has become very popular in recent years. And that's the idea of the bride and groom having a separate time together prior to the wedding ceremony where they see each other for the first time and it's documented, usually documented by the photographer. So this is kind of a private moment the couple has before walking down the aisle to the ceremony where traditionally um, the groom would see the bride for the very first time walking down the aisle. And I love a, a traditional first look of the couple, but something that I've seen a lot more recently and a lot more common is to do first look with other members. So a first look with a dad. I love a first look with a dad. I think these can be very touching photos and this is something that I've seen a lot more in recent years, as well as a first look with other family members like siblings, having a, a brother first look with a bride is also so tender and so sweet. Um, a first look with bridesmaids is something that we're seeing a lot. And recently I just saw several videos of the bride doing a first look with the groomsmen, um, especially if the groomsmen are good friends of the bride and you've kind of grown up with them or you guys are all spending a lot of time together so they know you pretty well. Seeing the documentation of the first look with the groomsman is is always pretty sweet as well number two is an uninterrupted first kiss so I'm so glad I'm seeing this on a lot of social media platforms whether it's in tip wedding tip videos or in trend videos um, having the officiant move out of the way prior to your first kiss is huge when it comes to your wedding photos I'm sure you've probably seen a lot of photos of maybe friends of yours or you've been to a wedding where the officiant did not move the couple kisses for the first time and their heads just kind of bobbing around in the background of that picture so if you're planning a wedding, make sure that you have that conversation with your officiant when he makes that announcement that you are married and you're going to kiss for the very first time that they step aside. And what I always recommend is just for a uniform, a uniform look in your photos, have them step to whatever side is going to be most cohesive. So if it is a male officiant, have them kind of pop over to the side where the groomsmen are standing. And if it is a female officiant, to pop over the side where the bridesmaids are standing. That way it'll be a more uniform look and there's no one right behind you. So you have that uninterrupted first kiss photo. Number three is a private last dance. I've been seeing this a ton. And for the first time this year, I have seen it with my own couples and other wedding vendor friends. So the idea of a private last dance is just the couple dancing to the very last song of the night. No one around, the photographer's not documenting it, it's just something that the couple is going to do for just themselves. There's a lot of time that you were probably separated during your day, you're torn in in different directions trying to talk to everyone at your wedding and you don't get a lot of time together and definitely not alone time together. So it's kind of nice to have this alone time together at the very end of the wedding, kind of soak in the entire day together. Also a little tip on this is if you are planning on doing a grand exit like sparklers or something, it's a great idea to have your DJ or whoever's going to be in charge of kind of coordinating the sparkler exit. If your venue is, is able to achieve this by having separate locations, if you're able to have your guests and your DJ kind of coordinating everybody to get into that sparkler exit and getting everyone in position, getting them all their sparklers and having everything set up, that's a great opportunity to have your private last dance while that is happening. That way you guys have your private moment together and all of this is getting set up and coordinated so that you're not having to wait around. And then when you're done with your private last dance, boom, go right into your sparkler exit. Number four, I just recently saw this and at first I had mixed feelings about it, but I'm actually leaning towards loving at this point is the bride and groom or the couple entering into the reception doing your grand entrance first instead of last. So a grand entrance is basically when you have the whole bridal party 
and the couple announced into the reception space. So usually it's once the guests are already sitting down, getting ready for dinner, and the DJ kind of announces you typically by couple if you're doing a full bridal party. And a lot of times the bridal party, each pair will do like a little dance or some kind of act and make it really entertaining. So if that's something that you plan to do, usually the couple will be last and you kind of build up. So maid of honor and best man would be second to last. You kind of build up to your own entrance. And I've always loved this because it kind of builds up the hype and then everyone's always on their feet and ready to go and cheer for you when you come in for your grand entrance. Um, but I've seen a couple videos where the bride and groom enter first and this way they're able to see everything that's happening. They're able to see all of their friends come in and do their fun little entrances and dances, whatever they are doing for their grand entrance. Number five is to combine the anniversary dance with bouquet toss. Again, this is something that I saw recently and I am loving it. I totally over the bouquet toss. I think a lot of my couples are over the bouquet toss. It's kind of awkward and uncomfortable now. And a lot of my couples are a little bit older and most of their friends are not single. And then it's like, you're singling out the two single girls at your wedding and showing everybody that they're single. And then this desperation to catch a bouquet so that you're the next one to get married. It's just, it's a weird tradition that we are seeing die and I'm okay with that. Um, however, I recently saw a video that kind of repurposed the bouquet toss and being able to hand off the bouquet in a much more tasteful and sweet way. And that is to combine the anniversary dance with the bouquet toss and if you're unfamiliar with what the anniversary dance is that is when your DJ will get all couples onto the dance floor and it's basically a competition to see who has been married the longest so after a certain period of time the DJ will tell anyone who's been married for you know a year or less to leave the dance floor and then five years or less and then 20 you know goes up to 20 30 40 50 and you see who has been married the longest and then the videos that I've seen were whoever is married the longest is kind of deemed the winner. And, and sometimes the DJ will go out and ask them, you know, advice they have for the bride and groom, um, tips they have on married marriage in general. And it's always a sweet little moment. And then uh, this would be the point where whoever wins that would get the bouquet. So the bouquet is kind of handed off as a prize. That way it's a lot more tasteful and you're still able to kind of pass on that tradition of giving the bouquet to somebody else and let them kind of treasure it or preserve it or whatever it's going to be. Number six is the social media minute. I have been seeing this everywhere. And again, this summer is the first time I saw it with several of my own couples. And this idea is that a lot of, a lot of couples are choosing to have an unplugged ceremony so that guests aren't standing there with their phones out and that's being documented by the actual professional photographer or they're not sticking their arm in the aisle or taking photos that are going to interfere with the professional photos that you're actually paying a lot of money for. So what I've seen couples do is have the officiant announce once you're just about ready to start the ceremony, everyone's up at the altar, they announce, okay, for 30 seconds or for a minute, take all the selfies, take all the photos you want of the couple and then put your phones away and don't touch them. And this way people aren't tempted to try and sneak a photo or be like, oh, I'll just take one and it won't be an issue. I, I see, I think that it really does help with the whole unplugged situation. It does seem like guests kind of get that out of their system and they don't feel the need to take photos later on. It also seems like it loosens up the couple a little bit. So once you get to the altar, it can be very nerve wracking because this is when it becomes real, right? You're about to say your vows. And if you have any sort of fear of speaking in front of people, there's a lot of people looking at you and having this kind of silly moment helps loosen the couple up a little bit. And it kind of reminds you like, oh, all these people here, we know we're friends with them. They love us. And it helps kind of ease the nerves a little bit. Number seven, love notes on the soles of your shoes. This is so sweet. I've always been a huge fan of when couples either give gifts to each other that they exchange on the wedding day or write letters to each other that they exchange on the wedding day and read and usually documented the reaction of these gifts or letters. Um, but something recently that I saw was writing these letters on the soles of each other's shoes. So basically you would have someone in charge on each side. So probably your maid of honor and their best man and you'd be in charge of swapping whatever shoes they're wearing on the wedding day, one of each. So you would get your partner's shoe and they would get yours, just one of them. And you write your love note on the bottom of their shoe. And not only is this just a sweet little moment that you can get a love, a love letter from your partner, but it also can make really cute photos too. You can use that shoe in detail photos. You can pose with the shoe on and you have the love note on the bottom. And it's something that's just a really cute keepsake as well. And you're going to be wearing it for your entire wedding day. Number eight is a champagne tower in lieu of a cake cutting. I've been seeing this everywhere and I've had a couple couples do that this summer and I think it's so fun. It's a great photo opportunity. 
It makes for great pictures, more so than I feel like cutting a cake. A lot of times you can't really see what's even happening in those photos. And it's also can be a very interactive photo op too. And it's a great way to kind of kick off your toast. Then guests can come up and grab a glass of champagne. I will say I highly recommend doing a champagne tower with the disposable or biodegradable um, cups that they make that have the little slots on them. This way you can lock it into place and make sure they're not going anywhere. If you're using real glass, um, I bid you good luck. <laughs> I'd highly recommend practicing prior to if you do want to use real glass because it can be fairly tricky. I'm always here for a new wedding trend. I love seeing how creative people can be with their weddings and what personal touches they bring into their own wedding. And TikTok is great for this, for great inspiration and a lot of wedding ideas. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice, and we'll see you next week.